and welcome to Best Brains Incorporated. Welcome to Best Brains, in home e of Mystery Science Theater 3000. In Eden Prairie, Minnesota. And it, thank you. And thank you. Mystery Science Theater 3000, the acclaimed cult hit. Well, you've got Ross and Chandler, who are roommates, and uh, you've got uh, the pretty girlfriend neighbor, who... I'm sorry, that's friends. Uh, Here, let me help you. Um, there's a guy and his robot pals. Uh, it's a puppet show that keeps me in stereo gear. Who have been shanghaied and forced to... Um, the hippest, deepest satire of our generation. Live on a spaceship. Not of their own design or their making. This would be the satellite of love. This is where we stay. Right was, here. Um, probably somewhere in... Puppets. This area. Yep, oh, I've broken it now. Sometimes have an opportunity to go down, down, down here, into the lower here regions. Here where they're okay. around and the Shit. things. So and that's. Back up through and then down. That's down. it. Being forced to watch some of the most horrible movies ever made. And it's a guy who sits and watches bad movies and um, makes fun of them. And they do all sorts of hijinks. A uh, evil entity is monitoring the results. It's the show with the, with the three guys in silhouette in front watching the movie. All right, that show. We take bad movies and we have characters who sit in front who are silhouetted and they talk back at the movie. Mystery Science Theater 3000 makes fun of bad movies, pure and simple. Did I mention we got a Peabody Award? Here's where it all happens. The nerve center of Best Brains, this is the where, heart of Mystery Science Theater 3000. This is where we earn our paychecks, right here in the studio. This was carved out of a solid block of office warehouse complex in Eden Prairie, and we built it all ourselves, as a matter of fact. Come on, watch your step now. Come on. You're holding this way. This is something that few people get to see. Well, it, unless you watch the show, then you see it all the time. Well, once you come behind here. Oh, behind the actual see, thing. Because what happens here? Here, let me this, demonstrate. This is where a lot of hijinks and shenanigans uh, happen. This is where a lot of ne'er-do-wells do... Um, cutting you know, up. Cutting up and, and sending up things mm -hmm. right here. A lot of... All the backstage shenanigans happen right here. This is Servo's side of the trench, obviously, since Servo usually ends up on that side of the camera and I stand here with my puppet in hand with one of the many control rods that aren't here right now so I can't demonstrate but it's like this this goes up servos up business end <laughs> and, uh, and, and this control. is where I stand and to remind me you can see the footprints which tell me which way to face come on back work the doors with us most people think that we actually have a tunnel back here about 48 feet long but in actual reality, these doors open to reveal a green screen with which we do the green screen process that you've probably heard so much about. Show them how it's done, Mike. Okay. Come in. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Come on in, Mike. We're just kidding with Mike again. I kid. How that works. Wow. So there's really not the doors yeah, there and so everything. So that you, you know. understand. I think you Thank figured you. that out. Well, Thank you. What next? What next? What else can we tell you about it? What else can we tell you about it? Don't date much. No. Big surprise. No, let's, see. Um, right, let's go this way then. Okay. Down, down. Mm. We're going down. 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 Well, let's see, there's Mike. This big, good-natured blonde guy from Wisconsin. Mike Nelson, played by Michael J. Nelson. Mike Nelson is a sap, a poor, hapless... Hapless... A hapless... A hapless chap. Pleasant, uh, sort of big brother to the robots. A, a temporary worker who... Uh, they needed some typing, and I was lured away from a lucrative position at TGI Fridays. Who... Uh, I get to do the bathrooms as well as turn on the dishwasher at night. So it's been a, a rich, rich career for me. Who, uh, by mistake rather than by design, is sent into orbit. He's trapped in a rocket ship with a, with a few robots, 
um, being chased by Mrs. Forrester. Pearl Forrester, who is uh, conducting this rather weird experiment. Pearl aided with the disappearance of Dr. Forrester. Well, she's evil because her son was evil and she's evil too. She's evil in kind of a fun way. She's got, represents sort of a fun sort of evil, I'd say. Here's the Crow station. Crow and his doppelganger. You see Crow, who's also named Crow, I believe. Yes. Which makes it a very uncanny doppelganger then. Crow is, Crow is a, uh, a wisecracker. Sort of a wisecracking, uh, smart alecky. Smart alecky. Sort of robot. A clever little fellow, let's say it that way, with kind of a devilish sense of humor. I feel a little humbled to be doing it, especially knowing that there are so many uh, MST fans out there who know Trace and are used to Trace and his work and love it. Trace Ballou, who played Crow and Dr. Forrester, has left the show. Bill Corbett has taken over for Crow, and I'd say he's done a very admirable job. I don't know. I guess, I guess the main thing I might bring, for better or worse, is that I'm from the East Coast. The people on the East Coast are very upfront with their attitudes and ideas, so I think we'll see a little more attitude out of Crow. Since he's from Brooklyn originally, he, there's a little bit of Brooklynese now in Crow, just a touch that maybe wasn't there before. But Crow has been injected with 12 vitamins and minerals, so every time you watch, you build... Uh, muscles 12 ways. He's constructed of some strange gold alloy I, I haven't exactly figured out yet. Um, you'll, you'll see in his makeup little bits of sporting goods like bowling pins and lacrosse nets and ping pong balls so he's a sporty guy. Uh, Crow is kind of tricky he's more complex than Servo because he has uh, well not, not only his head moves but his eyes move too. You see how that yeah, works? that's real complex follow stuff. Follow you boy. wherever you go. So Bill really has his work cut off for him. When he and his arms crow. move. Well, they, yeah, but if, that's only if you knock them. Rawr. Rawr. If you knock them. See, they, Don't knock oh, them sorry, over. he's actually propped up there. This is Servo's workbench, as you see Tom is, is here prominently featured. The nice, freshly painted Tom here, all ready to go. New bubblegum machine head, nice new crystal dome. Fresh paint on the little engine block. God, he looks good, doesn't he? God, he looks great. Yeah, man. Boy, That's I could great. eat him up. I am the voice and controlling rod operator of Tom Servo. He's a very simple puppet. Tom Servo, who's more of a... Uh, worldly renaissance robot, although considers himself quite a ladies man. Servo's a great singer. A small robot with a just a big sense of himself. Servo takes himself pretty seriously. More pompous. Servo's pretty pompous. He's pretty inflated. The, the show was going to be called Tom Servo's Mystery Science Theater 3000, but those discussions never went anywhere. You know, it wasn't really my fault. I, you know, well, moving well. on. Yeah. Gypsy? Do we have an... Uh, well, show the furry little monster that, uh, that we have here. Well, this is the furry little monster that we have here. Actually, the, the satellite of love hits this monster. It's roadkill. And uh, it begins to eat and digest crow on an upcoming episode of Mystery Science Theater yeah, 3000. Kind of very funny. And why, here's Gypsy. Gentle Gypsy, the all-knowing, wise, and uh, somewhat uh, silent uh, leader of the, of the robotic trio. Jim has to uh, work Gypsy, and it's very difficult because Gypsy <laughs> weighs a ton. And so Jim has to, uh, I hope I don't wreck your microphone here, Jim has to... Oh, I'm sorry. That's really cute. Uh, <laughs> Jim has to put this around his shoulders <laughs> like this. And, uh, do you mind? <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. So Jim's really going to be cheesed when you find yeah. out you stepped all over Jim his... Jim works uh, really hard at Gypsy. ...segment. <laughs> and then this gets plugged in somewhere. I'm not quite... There it is. Quite sure where. Which uh -huh. allows Gypsy's light to go on there, you see? Hello! I'm Gypsy, you see, and I fit in this little socket on the... On that, uh, and Jim works me, and he's really nice, and he does a great job of me, and gee, I can't wait to be on, on the show but this seriously, season. seriously, though, I mean, if I could say something serious I don't do Gypsy moment. well. The effort that is put into each and every show, it's, it's not just one person. It's so many people. And we'd like to thank... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, well... <laughs> Very nice. Hi, 
Hi. Here we are at the legendary Mystery Science Theater Park, ah. which is behind the wall that... Well, now, we know you think that we just shoot this out in the stars, but actually, we take little pieces of reflective tape, and we stick them onto the walls. And you could do this at home if you like, and you pretend can. you are in the stars. This is actually not here right now. This has been digitally inserted, and you can see how my hand actually looks like it's passing in front of the digital globe. Because it's texture mapped, and so it's it texture stays. texture mapped, and this can be enlarged. Why don't the digital editors enlarge this right now? Guys? Right. See how they... Guy, well, they must not be there, but you know. It's been rasterized too. From yes, what I exactly. Now look at that, how much so, action we can yeah. get out of it. It's very lively. It's very lively. And Editors convincing. fooling around there. You can see someone doodled on my face. That's really funny. <laughs> now, this is really the heart of the whole show. This is here. the heart and soul of it all, right here. The writing room. It's, we watch the TV here and. And throw comments at the screen while we're watching whatever movie's on, and uh, and we write all our comments down on the um, on the computer here. It's Why, a lot can, of fun. We can probably catch a comment right now if we look. And here Let's we are. Look, here's Kevin. here's one of the fine jokes that you'll be seeing this season on Mystery Science Theater. Don't look at my underpants. Don't look at my underpants. <laughs> See what makes it <laughs> that funny was is handcrafted <laughs> over a series of weeks. It's uh, the repetition, the call and response. Don't, don't look, look at, at my, my underpants. underpants. Funny, but. Then add another one. Don't look at my underpants. See, then it gets funnier. That's the things you'd learn if you hung around here. So the writing room at, at Mystery Science Theater 3000. Now let's take a look at this. Best brains. This is really the heart and the soul of the whole show, even though I said the studio I the other part was, was the heart, heart and the soul. I lied about it. It's I actually the writing the room, room was the heart and the soul. Well, there's that too. This, yeah, uh, this has is a big one of heart the hearts and, and the souls of the place. As you look down these hallways here, you'll see props from all eight seasons of Mystery Science Theater 3000. And and a lot of the new props that we're using here at the Sci-Fi Channel are the ones that are closest to Penguin, which is uh, another amazing piece of marvelous computer-generated imagery. Which I can move it around. And if you can look down this row here, which I don't think you should really do, well. you'll see all the dead writers that we've used over the years. all-new sci-fi mystery science. Well, uh, the basic premise is still the same, that we make fun of uh, bad motion pictures. We've got uh, a lot of plot changes, and better movies, I think, is the best thing going for it. The Sci-Fi Channel has better movies than we had at the, the other one. Older, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be crisper, it's, um, it's lighter in some ways, uh, it's, it's sort of fluffy, it's got the egg whites are whipped this time around instead of just mixing the whole eggs into the show. You like monkeys? Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot of monkeys on this show. Spider monkeys, um, macaques, lots of simians. It's creamier, um, it juicier. We have just so much more going on. Some surprises. I, if I talk about it, they'd have to kill me. We're going to have a lot of fun with the conventions of science fiction. New sets, new lighting and stuff. It's just better. I can't get any more specific than that because I'll give it away. But there's a whole plot thing going on. Dr. Forrester is, is explained away. You have to tune in and watch. Am I really supposed to answer this question? No, it's, I mean, it's inherently better because it's on the Sci-Fi Channel. I don't think we'll ever, 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 ever run out of bad movies. The nice thing is that Hollywood makes probably more of those in a given year than, than they make good ones. Somebody's going to shell out the money and, uh, and make them, and it'll be our painful duty to look at them and, and laugh at them and, and expose them for what they are. No, we will never run out of bad movies, because for every one that we've done, we've looked at 20 possibilities. We'll never run out of bad movies. If we do, we'll have to get real jobs. Folks, trust us when we say that we're going to bring you the uh, only show on the Science Fiction Channel that has puppets making fun of films. I guarantee that. Thanks for watching. We're, we're happy to be home, and we hope to be here for quite a while.